He's a self-styled former road boy turned police officer slash businessman with a line of ventures in St. Thomas, which some call the Forgotten Parish. But what makes that story even more extraordinary is the incident that prompted all this. A massive accident on the way home from the airport, his car dangling over a cliff and his life, as they say, flashing before his eyes. My guest is Horain Kelly. Stick around for his amazing story. I'm Archibald. <laughs> Maureen Kelly, welcome to Profile. Blessings, Chief. So you've been in the media recently because of your inspiring story of turning around your life from being a so-called rude boy to now being an entrepreneur and a police officer. And you own a series and own and operate a series of businesses in St. Thomas, including an auto parts store, a bike shop, a salon. When you look at where you've come from and where you are now, how do you feel? It's just blessing, you know, just God and his blessings, nothing more. Nothing more than just absolute blessings. Just God. Now, part of the reason people are interested in this story and they've been talking about it is, as we say, the origins of the story, the rude boy aspect. But in many ways, what you're doing now has been a change because of what happened in 2017. So that's actually where I want to start. I want to talk about that car crash that took place in 2017. You were headed from the airport, and what happened? Uh, in 2017, I was heading from the airport, um, flying from New York um, to Montego Bay. And upon reaching um, in St. Thomas along the Roselle Main Road in the vicinity of the examination depot, um, it seems as if I was jet lagged and I fall asleep. And, overturned over to the seaside. The car um, flipped a few times and fell on the top. And I sustained some injuries. The car was hanging off the cliff? Yeah, basically. And I could hear the waves crashing out, um, against the rocks. What were you thinking in the moment? In that moment, there was only two choices. Sit there upside down and waiting for the car to drop in the sea or I would try to help myself out by crawling, which I choose crawling out of the motor vehicle. So that's exactly what you did. You crawled out, but then when you got out, how did you get help exactly? Um, I made a phone call to a friend of mine, Shane Henry, so-called Ian. He was a person who took me to the hospital. And reaching the hospital, I had now found out that I couldn't walk. And it was revealed that I received injuries to the neck and fracturing bones C6 and C5 and dislocated my back. Those are bones in the spine? Yes. And leaving the left side of my body partially paralyzed. So you spent a, this, you went to Princess Margaret Hospital? Yes. You were in there for about what, about two months? I uh, don't remember the time frame just now, but I was there for a while. So you're processing all of this. You are, you've turned your life around at this point, but then you have this massive accident and you're spending all of this time in a hospital bed. How, how are you processing all of this? Uh, I would, um, at the time, I would have to be strong in terms of mindset because there were so many persons who would visit and they would be crying. And as a result of that, God gave me strength, that fuel to push on. And even hearing the doctor saying that um, the walk is going to take time, and then the, um, the therapist say it's going to take some time to walk, and doing the bed therapy and then the chair therapy to walk is like, it was a process. But during the process, I found strength, and that strength propelled me forward. Mm -hmm. Explain a little bit more about that process. What did you have to do to be able to recover? Ah, uh, I don't know where I found that strength. I just could say it's the Almighty that gave me that strength to push on. There is no other way or force I could think of that gave me that strength. From the hospital perspective, though, you had to be doing all kinds of different exercises. What were you doing? Uh, I did 
some cheer therapy because I didn't know that at the time that if you were lying on your back for a long period of time, um, to get up or to sit up, it would be difficult. It caused like a blackout and you would pass out. As a result of that, um, day by day, and they would elevate um, the, the pillows behind my back until I could go in the chair that they placed beside the bed. So give that therapy and then um, the therapist would give some instructions or some series of exercise to be carried out. And I did see him and I progressed well. Did you ever think that they were, you know, that maybe I wouldn't be able to walk again? There were doubts, but the willpower and the mindset was more stronger than the doubts. Now, that's been your inspiration for turning your life around, or rather, changing your path again to entrepreneurship. Yes, because um, I, see it, I see it as a second chance at life. So being here thinking it's a second chance, I'm just trying to make well off the chance I receive. What are you doing now? Ah, uh, try to inspire others, try to propel um, my family forward and myself, try to create something that I never thought I could. Seeing that coming from the way in the country, in the deep rural area, where um, it's almost impossible to see people doing that. That is not from run of my neck, of the place that where I'm from, but as a result of the mindset and person that you are around that doing same or even doing better that helps you to propel and push your brain and enhance it to push on. What was it about that moment that made you say, I have to do this, I have to change, I have to do something different? Because uh, being in a circumstance where um, is the first I'm going, to, uh, going into a MRI machine and that MRI machine, it looked like something I see in the movies, where you see people dead and go to heaven, that bright light. And seeing that and experiencing all that and the difficulty and the struggle, because I wouldn't say I didn't struggle. I struggled and I suffered and I suffered a lot. Even though I'm talking to you, I still can feel pain from it because it's more of a mental game. And seeing that the training I received um, in police training, about um, getting injuries and pushing on. Those are some of the things that helped me to push on and nurture the strength that I, get, um, that I received to recover. Now, this is not the only point in your life when you started a completely new path or when you had to overcome difficulties. And in our next segment, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about what Horain referenced a little bit, his original, his origins rather, in Portland and how that sort of influenced his life overall. And this rude boy story, we're going to investigate it a little bit. You're watching Profile. Stick around. More after the break.